Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show and today I'm starting the episode in a little bit of an unusual fashion. I thought I'd share with you some amazing buys I found from a seller on eBay. Now this is called Wings for You and it's Wings, the number four and then you, Y-O-U of course. Those of you who remember, I actually purchased, uh, I should do a wristwatch check, shouldn't I? Of course I've got the Tudor Day date and I've put it on this beautiful collar web and with the aftermarket gold Rolex buckle to match. Just pure class. There's no strap this watch does not work with. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Let's get back to the intro. Uh, now, as I was saying, I actually purchased this as a Christmas gift and I loved it so much. This is the Death Head Moth. Uh, you'll recognize it from the Silence of the Lambs film. And I loved it so much I kept it. It's absolutely stunning and this seller has some of the most beautiful butterflies and insects i've ever ever seen and they, they're very affordable they come this is about i think just over I think 20 30 bucks best offer and just look at the beautiful colors this is a madagascan sunset moth and I, just look at these colors this is beautiful now i got inspired to start collecting these because my grandfather used to have used to collect these and used to have them if you saw my video about uh, going through old family photos he used to have his dorm room in at Cambridge uh, I noticed in the pictures it the walls were adorned with uh, rare butterflies now this is a green and blue Paplio Paris uh, butterfly I'm not sure where it's from but just Look at those colors. They're very reasonably priced. I love finding stuff like this on eBay because it's so unique. This absolute stunning little beauty is the Optima Verso Peruvian Butterfly. Just absolutely stunning. Look at those beautiful blues. Just so, it's just so nice to have on the walls. Um, you can obviously you can frame them yourselves, but they come with these beautiful frames. They just bring so much joy and they're so beautiful. Um, just absolutely stunning. Now guys, I'll leave a link down and down below. I know it's a bit of a random way to, <laughs> to start the episode. Okay guys, let's roll the intro and get on with the show. and welcome to the show today we're going to do another wristwatch talk episode i realize i only just did one the other day uh, but there's just so much to talk about now first of all i have to apologize if you hear a tapping sound it is very uh it's gray miserable raining uh quite hard outside and uh, of course it's the weather i absolutely love i don't know why i'm very strange like that i guess it's uh it's that London weather that we're so famous for. Here in New York, um, I just like being indoors when it's like this. So you'll hear kind of tapping, as you can hear in the background. So I do apologize. Anyway, so quite a lot to talk about today. Also got a, an unboxing slightly later on, a new brand. Uh, I have had a little bit of experience with, but I haven't yet fully reviewed. I haven't mentioned this brand, uh, but we'll keep that as a surprise. Now, forgive me, I haven't done a wristwatch check. Let me just quickly do a wristwatch check. Still wearing the uh, the Glycine Combat Sub. It's really, really growing on me. I absolutely adore it. Uh, and I'm still waiting for the straps, my 22 millimeter straps for this with the PVD and gold buckles. So I'm still wearing it on the marathon. And on this side, I'm wearing the, uh, the Tudor, the Day Date that I just reviewed. You'll see I've put it on this beautiful blue collar rib. And if you see there, I've put the aftermarket Rolex buckle on it just to give it that little finishing touch. It, it fits absolutely beautifully. I managed to track one down second hand on eBay. And I just, I've, got to, I've got to say, I love this watch. I'm getting into gold. What's gold, gold, what's wrong with me? I'm getting old. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just really enjoying, enjoying this piece and um, I think gold is such a, especially yellow gold, I, I should say, is, is such a fun, such a fun uh, metal to, um, to dress up. Anyway, 
Right, wristwatch check done. Let's get back to the, uh, the the issues at hand. I just wanted to follow up quickly on the last wristwatch talk episode. We were discussing grey market watches, and I had a lot of really interesting comments, and a ton of emails came in. A lot of you guys sharing your horror stories of buying on the grey market, and some positive results. I would say the ratio was about you know seventy five percent negative. 25% positive and I think that's the risk factor. Uh, some of you even managed to get grey market watches with the original uh, manufacturer's warranty and I've, I've never seen that before. I, I take your word for it if, it's, if it happens. Maybe it's more that happens more in Europe or overseas. I haven't experienced it yet. I've bought the grey market a total of four times and that's what I based my advice off and the, um, the experiences of my friends. I think was justified. I still stand by everything I say in the video. Uh, and, and the majority of the emails I got were really kind of um, rather unpleasant uh, horror stories of your experiences. And I really stick to that $1,000 limit because, you know, going on Amazon, buying a Citizen, a Seiko, something like that, a, a Hamilton, with an ETA, absolutely fine. Even an Oris with a Salita, absolutely fine. Grey market horror stories. I, I don't know if you guys want me to share that. I got so many. I could I could make a whole new video of just reading out some of them incredible emails. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for the emails. I do apologise. I can't write back to all of you now. I've got to that stage where you know I get 30, 40 emails a day, and if I sat down and wrote to each and every one of you, it would just take absolutely forever. So. Uh, but thank you very much for all the feedback, really, really fantastic stuff. And positive experiences, which I must not, you know, neglect. Uh, I think it's important to, to know you can get some good deals, but stay to that $1,000 mark and under, and I think you'll do okay. Anyway, guys, so, uh, next topic of discussion is, there was a really great post by, I think it was Anna Dean on, on, on Facebook, in the Facebook group. Guys, if you haven't joined the Facebook group, it's a closed group on Facebook. We're nearing about 3,000 uh, members on there. It's, uh, it was a little rocky at the start because we didn't have any rules and, of course, the growing pains at the beginning. But now it's become a really fantastic movement, a, a real sense of community there. It's the best, fastest way to answer all your horological questions because not only, you know, I try and interact there as well, but you've got the whole group, uh, people far more knowledgeable than me, uh, long-time supporters of the show, so there's so, there's a wealth of knowledge, uh, connections, and, and and fantastic people to to get to know and and to share our passion with, and I really it's it's been a blessing. It really has. I mean, you know, for all my personal loathing of of Facebook, I got to say, Facebook actually it, it, it was it's a big big winner, and and I'm very gracious. I never thought I'd say that, and I'm glad I I made that jump into into Facebook. It's been really positive and you know it's funny it's only the group's only been going a couple of months but yet uh, the response has been phenomenal so guys thank you very much for the, the interactions and, and, and the contributions beautiful I, I you know I'm indebted to all of you um, I still stand by everything I say about Facebook I still think uh, you know outside the group as a social media platform it is a cesspit of uh, philistinism and vulgarity oh my god some of the posts I mean the thing is you, you you have friends that you know in real life you see their Facebook you see some of the vulgar just uh, just stuff <laughs> really ghastly 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 ghast awfully ghastly um, absolutely ghastly uh, toilet humor awful political stuff it's just such bad taste you know but anyway let, let's not go down that route I've already ranted and raved about uh, the depravity of Facebook but you know it's good that there's a positive side and actually one of these fantastic posts that Anna Dean sorry I'm getting totally off topic uh, that Anna Dean posted was and I'll share it hopefully here on this side of the screen let me just get my laptop out so I can I can talk about it and read some of your comments now as you can see it's a chart this was done by real men real style right you got to give some respect to to Antonio that uh, real men real star you know he's trying he's new into watches but I I really wanted to share this with you guys because it's a topic 
that I really want to discuss in the future because a lot of you have asked what watches work with what outfits and that kind of thing and I'm going to do a tutorial and give you examples and, and physically myself dress in different apparel different different sartorial choices and outfits and stuff like that I just can't do it right now because I'm I'm still not well enough but I will do it soon now this is this is a this chart demonstrates it's called matching your watch by your dress code it's a chart that's been made by somebody who it's obviously you know new into watches very traditional kind of approach to matching watches he's got five categories at the top he's got dress diver chrono pilot field and then the different and then five different examples five categories and then ticks you know it's corresponding to what is acceptable and what is not now the first thing is is that I gotta say I, I I really despise things like this because if you take it as gospel I think it's absolutely wrong right because the first thing is is every watch is different for example the true the day date or a Rolex Datejust uh, that is a dress watch is also waterproof and you can wear it with super casual from sportswear to a black tie event in be absolute so that that basically voids everything another example is the speedmaster if you look at the chronograph section he's he said it's not you can't wear it for business formal or or a black white tie event i've actually seen george clooney wear a speedmaster on a leather strap at a i think it was black tie or some kind of you know some award show looked amazing there's nothing classier than a speedmaster on a really luxury high-end you know crocodile grain or lizard grain strap you know it just looks a million dollars so again you know that I could keep naming watches and naming watches and naming watches that void this chart I understand what uh, Antonio's doing here and bless his cotton little socks this is really for beginners or, or, or people that have no clue at all and actually somebody said in the comments um, that they find real men real style kind of you know if you're absolutely clueless then it's a good place to start but for those of us who are a bit more educated a bit more worldly have a bit more common sense and really understand watches a bit more uh, I'm not I'm not claiming to be any expert I'm still learning every day just as an, an Antonio obviously is there are some things I do agree you know for example I think wearing a G-Shock with a suit you know I think is really bad form but that's my personal opinion. But rules are there to be broken as well. You can really play with fashion and really have fun with it and do opposite things and, and you can achieve some really great looks, which you know I think I will follow up with a kind of sartorial watch guide at some point. But you have to be careful because, like I said, I, I really do believe each watch should be judged individually. You know putting so many watches into boxes each watch is so different and also you know look, think of the submariner look at the diver there you think of james bond in a tux in uh, was it dr no real really back in the early days with the submariner and on a a uh, was it a nato or zulu i can't even remember but you know a lot of a lot of no nos there right but yet he was so cool and it became you know it's it's accepted now wearing a diver with a with a suit it's a subject that you know guys i'd really like to know down in the comments do you think a chart like this is is, is useful or do you think it's complete nonsense i think generally the consensus in the facebook group was of kind of disagreement it's almost from another century you know this kind of thinking but you know, I understand what, what Antonio is trying to do there. You know, and then there's the argument of any luxury watch is considered a, a good enough performer because of its refinement, because of its high cost. So there's a lot of factors at play here. Uh, but I really think, guys, you should judge your watch individually. There is no chart. Watches are far too individualistic in design and some are so unique. I think it should be matched aesthetically uh, a little bit of tradition and heritage should be kind of taken into consideration you know there's a lot of factors at, at play here the IWC an IWC pilot watch I think it would look great with business form you know they're very very smart they're understated yes it's a pilot watch yes it's a uh, you know something that was designed obviously to be worn by pilots but Come on, I mean, an IWC, some of them are so classy. They almost make you want to put on a suit, 
wearing a, a, a dress watch with sportswear, yeah, I can, I, I can understand that. It would have been nice to have digital DG shocks in that category. It would probably be, I think it's the only watch I can think of that, that really only is good for sportswear and, and, and casual wear, you know. Uh, but anyway, very interesting post. I love posts like that in the group. It's it's very it's I find it fascinating. Anyway, so what else? Let's let's just get that out of the way. Just to kind of follow up, I will be doing a series looking at um, attire and what watches go. The thing is, is like I said, you judge a watch on its own merit. Just because a watch is a, a diver watch or a, or a pilot watch doesn't mean you can't wear it with a suit. It really depends on the watch. Guys, and if you want to see me do a video on matching clothing with watches, let me know as well because I will move it up the priority list. Okay, now moving on. Now the next topic of discussion is uh, quite a controversial one and it's really given me a lot of thought. Now before I go into this, it's, it's got to do with donations. Now, while I was in hospital, Risk Candy Watch Club uh, started an account on I think it was gofundme.com or something like that uh, towards my medical bills and it's very very gracious now personally I would never ask for donations it's just not my style however you know because I was in the hospital they, they, they went ahead and did this and I've got to say a massive thank you to anybody and everyone who donated it was completely anonymous so I, I don't exactly know who you are but thank you very much to Risk Candy Watch Club for for thinking of me in, in such a uh, such a kind, generous way, and I I am putting that money towards my medical bills. I, you know, I need every penny I, I can get, especially as I'm out of work now. I'm trying to to get back into a little bit of freelance work that I will do from home. Um, so it's not all doom and gloom. The problem arises is that obviously I, I'm not going to have as much money this year to buy watches and all the rest of it. I think actually this was my last kind of big expense before I went into hospital. And of course, I've still got to pay off my morphine shopping experience. But you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that uh, with the, by hard work, you know, which is what I always do. I may come from a certain background, but I, I certainly don't have a silver spoon. Uh, I, I fund my own way and that's the honourable, correct way to be, at least that's how I was raised. You know, I wish I had mommy and daddy supporting me, but I'm fiercely independent. I always have been, and that's just part of who I am and who I will always be. It's I've always found my own way. Uh, now the drawback of that is that, of course, I'm some of my watch buying goals for this year. I'm going to have to kind of slow down a bit. But a discussion started in the group uh, regarding a a kind of money pot idea I guess um, and and it was a bit controversial there was some disagreements about it, and that's absolutely fine somebody made the comment that if every member of the group or the channel put in a couple of dollars I could then put that money towards buying any watch you guys wanted buying it for the channel reviewing it then selling it or even having it as a raffle or a prize in a competition for you guys to win or even sell it and invest that money in buying another watch and another watch and another watch to keep the reviews coming in and to widen the the amount and availability and, and of watches. Now I think it's a really great idea. Now my personal opinion is I, I think actually I don't want to force my audience and I certainly don't want to ask my audience for donations. It's just it's just not my style. It is quite a nice idea that some members of the community are willing to put their money where their mouth is and invest into the channel, which I think is a really good idea. The way I'm going to go about this is I'm going to start a new group on Facebook very soon. And this group is going to be the Patrons Club. And it's not going to be like the watch group that is already in existence with thousands of members. That group is a community, it's for sharing your, your watch pictures, etc, etc. This is going to be a very small, closed group, private group of people, supporters, viewers of the ch channel that would like and are happy with contributing funds towards the purchase of watches 
for the purpose of reviews and for the channel. Now I think asking you know every you know viewer to put in money, I think that's that's I don't want to do that. I, I'm uncomfortable with doing that. However, I, I acknowledge that you know maybe let's say there were 12 of you or 20 of you that are comfortable with putting $50 down or something like that into one kind of a collection pot and then uh, trust me to buy the watch that we vote for in the group we, we have a little election like a little democracy just imagine that you know I could I could buy the Oris 65 I could review it you know a lot of these companies I can't have access to because I'm, I'm, I'm obviously I'm not a journalist I'm not in the industry I'm outside of the industry the watch companies that are working with me it is on a it's on a completely open relationship there's no money exchanged you know I, I don't get paid for my reviews and I don't want to because I want to remain absolutely fundamentally journalistically independent and objective because I if a, if a company when you know you'll see a lot of these youtubers channels far bigger than me and this is the problem with a lot of especially in the watch industry is you gotta understand a lot of those reviews are sponsored and if somebody sponsors you you've got to sing high praises about the product and if the product is not you know if there's something negative or that I don't like about the product I want to be able to say that luckily you know I'm doing this channel as a, as a hobby and I'm keep staying independent and I'm I'm outside of the industry and, and, and it's a great place to be I don't want to become a corporate sellout or whatever you know I think that's what makes the channel so successful you know I've only given a few bad reviews and I felt terrible but I had to speak the truth because I owe it to you however the, the, the negative of being outside the industry is that I don't have access to all these watches I mean you know Oris and um, you know IWC and countless countless brands they they're not gonna send me watches most of them are like oh, who, who are you who are you who are you you know who's this you know they don't know me but you know fair enough I don't I don't expect to you know I, I um, I'm here because I love watches and I love talking about it and I love reviewing them and I always will and I think that's the difference especially with the big guys in the in the watch game is that they're not excited about the watches you watch these professional reviews and you just feels it's their job you know it's not my job I'm sharing my hobby you know that's a huge fundamental difference and I think it affects the the, the final the final you know why do you think I wear two watches I'm not I mean yes I'm a little insane a little bit eccentric but it's because I, I, I adore them you know if I had I wish I was like that Indian god with with six or or eight arms or however many it is you know then I'd wear I'd wear even more watches guys if you're interested in becoming a patron uh, you know I only need a handful of you that that are willing to trust me and invest uh, just imagine the possibilities I mean let's say there would be no limit just imagine next week I could put an order in for a Zin or a Young Hands or a or a uh, you know any Steinhardt or any we will have elections now guys I don't want you to jump ahead of the boat and, and start uh, trying to send me money here there and everywhere I want this video to kind of gauge the interest with you guys but I want to do it by the book and I think the best way really is a, a closed group on Facebook where we can in private hold elections, nominate watches, come to a collective agreement on what watches, how much to invest, blah 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 blah, all the rest of it. And I want it to be uh, completely transparent with you guys, but if we're talking about money, it's it's got to be absolutely by the book and uh, I, I think if it is successful, give me access to so many more brands, which I think ultimately is the real the real kind of cornerstone to making this channel even more successful because you know I've already got access to everything that Saltzman's have everything uh, Long Island watches have etc etc there are you know tons of other mid-range and higher-end uh, tiers that I still want to go for I mean imagine imagine me reviewing a JLC you know or imagine me reviewing uh, the latest uh, Seamaster 300 or 
from Omega or the Gerard Perrigo or you know uh, the list is endless the list is endless what's stopping me is finances you know I'm, I'm already trying I've already got this expensive uh, little apartment here in New York I don't have that silver spoon unfortunately I wish I did but then you know if I was filthy abs absolutely filthy rich I probably wouldn't give a damn about you know I just have all the watches actually that's quite an interesting discussion I mean do you think if I was absolutely minted, I mean, really, I mean, really filthy rich. And, I, and the funny thing is, I, I do have family members that are extremely well off, and they don't seem to be, well, they all wear swatches, you know, they don't even care, you know. They, I don't think they, I, they have Pateks and Cartiers and countless Rolexes, but they never wear them, you know, it's quite interesting. I think, I'd like to think that if I was filthy rich at some point, I would still be as obsessive about watches. I'd just have more. But I, what I wonder is that if, if, if having access to all these watches would kind of lessen my passion for them, is the fact that I can't afford some of them and they're uh, not within my grasp, does that make them more, you know, you know when you, when you save and save and save up for the watch and you finally get it and you're really excited? You know, I think that does influence it, you know? Hey, guys, let me know down in the comments. For example, my Submariner, when I wear it, I, I think back to when I got it, I think back to the sentimental value of it, the, the, the achievement of, of, of earning it at 30 and all the work and all the rest of it. And it makes me feel proud the same way with with a lot of my watches even even you know my mid-tier pieces I'm I'm so you know I, I still get that excitement that you know stalking the mailman at the end of the day I think guys it's it's just something within me and I, I I will always be obsessed about it I think if I did have all the watches in the world I probably would still be as obsessed and as passionate but it wouldn't be as much. I think the, f the fact that there is some exclusivity and, and it's not all within my grasp does make, does kind of, um, what's the word? Magnify, Ma magnify? I don't know if that's the correct word. It does, does kind of heighten the, the, the expectation and the excitement, I think. Uh, because look, if, if I had every Rolex and every JLC and every, you know, Elange and Zahn and all the rest of it, what would I have a channel about? I'd just be going to the opera and doing opera reviews. <laughs> no, I'd be doing a hell of a lot of traveling, actually. I'd, I'd probably do that. Uh, traveling around the world with a Lange and Zon in one hand and a and my Submariner on the other, and, and, and probably a, a, a Reverso on one ankle, and, uh, and my Speedy and my Brightling on the other, you know? So, you know, I'd still have a Squalet. I'd still have a Squalet. I'd still have my SKX. Where's my SKX? It's got a bit forgotten about in this little winder here. This is a USB winder. Anyway, guys, um, I'm rambling. I'm going on far too much about this stuff. Really like to hear your input. Let me know what you think down below. Let's switch now to a surprise unboxing. Uh, now, last time I did an unboxing, somebody actually complained that it wasn't a proper unboxing because I had already open the box so uh, which is completely ridiculous uh, because there was a box obviously and something came out of the box hence it was an unboxing but uh, I will record for the sake of uh, prosperity me opening the box now I'm using you also guys you asked what I was using I'm using this what is this this is an Emerson doesn't doesn't say oh here we go there we go, Emerson Kershaw, and actually I bought this off a friend of mine, and I really, really love it. It's a really great, solid, affordable knife. Anyway, so let's, uh, let's open this up. Right, let's open it up. Oh, now what's this say? What's this? Rituals of time, right. It's already given the, a, a little clue away. Oh, we've got a magazine as well. Oh, we've got a mundane magazine. Let's have a look at this. It is not a mundane, but 
it's another brand that I will be taking a look at so we'll have a closer look at that at a later point but we're actually having a look at this it's just there we go Rituals of Time now this is a brand that I have covered before right is it thank you person on the motorbike oh, it's like a book ah there it is it's I've already given it away let's open it up I'm gonna don the white gloves people wanted to know why I wear white gloves well it's simple helps the camera focus it reflects light onto the item if you're dealing with a watch with a glass face or a high polished finish you can wipe smudges off as you go so there's a lot of reasons and also it's a little bit more professional and looking at hands you're not distracted by the hand you're looking at the watch there's no distraction the white is also a very good background there you go for the millionth time now how do you open this i think this slides are oh here we go okay wow now this is very nice this is like a book it is a book right drum roll please Let's open it up. Oh wow. Wow. Very nice. And here we are. It's in a it's in this weird. Look at that. This is how the watch comes. That's crazy. It's like I've never seen anything like it. Oh look at that strap. We've got a spare strap. We've got two strap mice to see. Wow. Look, oh, it's a blue dial. Look at that. Oh, it's gorgeous. Little 36 millimeter size. I'm almost. Oh, wow. It opens like this. Oh, now that is genius. That is pure class. So here's the watch itself. Beautiful little. It's almost the same size as the Datejust. Beautiful little 30, 36 millimeter. Oh, look at that. Oh, my gosh. Look at that blue. Look at that place, should we give it a wind? Hello. Hello indeed. Now I can't tell if it's going, but it has a beautiful tick to it. This is the Meister Singer Neo, 36 millimeters. I believe it comes in various sizes. You can see the fire escape reflection. Sorry about that. It's just, it's just, ref oh, oh, look at that blue. Look at that blue. Oh my gosh. Very nice indeed. Meister Singer. Beautiful. Lovely um, suede grey strap. And we have another strap in here. This focus is off today, isn't it? And signed Meister Singer buckle. Oh, look, they got a little, little bolt action spring bar as well. Wow, this is gorgeous. Look at those lugs. It's very kind of Bauhaus. It's extremely elegant. The construction of it, beautiful. Look at that little signed crown. Absolutely stunning. Really, really beautiful little watch. Can't wait to review this. And I'm just blown away by the packaging. Look at that. That's just very neat. Looks like it's suspended. You could just display it like that. <laughs> so what else have we got in the box? manual everything here one of the most nicest most original beautiful little watch boxes i've ever had the other complications so mine is the neo which is this one apologize about the noise of the uh, it's a bit of a storm here anyway this is really really something else i'm just overwhelmed by the packaging beautifully done can't wait to review this little beauty absolute pure class let's just look at that blue again before we go oh look at that <sighs> hello indeed look at that absolute pure class of that beautiful don i presume it's sapphire but we'll find out for the full uh, review anyway guys amazing very nice pleasant surprise just reeks of quality I, I you can't you can't deny it really nice uh, little watch there this is just absolutely you could put that on the bookshelf like a book pure class this this is how watches 
should be packaged. Absolute pure class. All right, guys. Um, quite a lot. Quite a lot here to think about. Stay tuned for the full review. All right, guys. Let's switch perspectives and take it back to the studio. Okay, welcome back, guys. Now a lot to discuss in today's video. I'd really like to hear your opinions, as always. Of course, join the Facebook group. Patrons, if you're interested in the Patreon program, I'm looking for about 10 to 20 uh, core members uh, that are willing to invest and kind of help the channel grow and have access to more watches, then please email me or comment. And if it's, if it's, a, if it's an all go from you guys, I will start the, the steps to organize it and put something together. I think it is a great idea, but I, of course, I don't want to force anybody uh, to do anything that they don't want to. If you're, you're not interested, that's absolutely fine. Best way to support the channel is just to keep watching, keep commenting, sharing the videos, engaging in the Facebook group. I just love reading all the comments. I'm just sorry that I can't physically you know, reply to everybody right now. I mean, I know in the early days I used to reply to every single comment. Uh, nowadays it's getting a bit quite difficult, but I try and reach out to as many of you as possible because it's important to me the community aspect the journalistic freedom the uh, integrity the kind of objectivity and independence of this channel is really thanks to you guys and your support I would not be able to do it without you so that's just you know onwards and upwards uh, as I always say and I think that's the best policy anyway I'm gonna end the video there because I think that's a perfect note perfect positive vibe to end the video. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And of course, as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay guys, ciao.